Hello internet users and welcome back to another video. Today I'm once again going to be exploiting something in an old video game to make myself look smarter than I actually am. So normally when I talk about softlocks and Pokemon, the main focus is usually on a very weak or gimmicky Pokemon that is unable to do anything in battle. So that made me consider something. I wanted to flip that idea around and see if we can come up with a trap that involves being stuck with an extremely powerful Pokemon instead. It's one thing to ruin your save file with a Magikarp, but to do the same with a level 100 Mewtwo sounds like a whole other achievement. And for this video, we're going to be doing just that in Pokemon Sapphire version. Now in order to set this up, you first have to begin a new game and play normally up to a certain point. This particular trap is going to be done in Moss Deep City, so as soon as you get there, you're good to go. If you're familiar with some of my other videos, you'll remember that I usually say to avoid picking up some optional items like the fishing rods, because they can sometimes be used as a means of escape. However, this time, this isn't going to matter. You'll see why in a bit. So here are the steps to follow. Number one, get a Mewtwo. So obviously, if we're going to be trapping ourselves with a Mewtwo, we're first going to need to actually have one. In this case, let's just say that during our character's journey through Hoenn, he decided to stop and trade with his pal from the Fire Red and Leaf Green universe, getting himself a level 100 Mewtwo. Since this trap is about being stuck with something extremely powerful, there is no better Pokemon to choose for this than Mewtwo, especially since it's unable to learn Fly or Surf, the two moves that would let you out of any situation fairly easily. By the way, it's worth noting that the reason I'm playing Sapphire instead of Emerald is because Emerald actually prevents trading for non hoenn Dex Pokemon until after you finish the game. As another side note, while I was getting some footage for this video, I found a shiny Hariyama on another game, so I'm also just sending that over so I can show everyone I found it. Number 2. Get rid of all your items and money. To make sure you have no lifelines later on, you'll need to get rid of absolutely everything. This trap is centered around the idea that you'll be stuck with only one Pokemon, so naturally the next step is to make sure you can't get any more. By spending all of your money and then tossing every single item you can, we're making sure that the player can never afford another Pokeball for the rest of their life. Don't forget, because the island of Moss Deep is where you'll be trapped, you will also have to collect and toss all of the items here too. This includes not only the items that are visible on the map, but the gifts given to you by the city's NPCs. For example, this guy outside of Steven's house gives you a King's Rock, and this man inside the Space Center gives you a Sunstone. There aren't any invisible items on the island, you can find some in the remakes with the item finder, but not in the originals. And if you didn't already, also go ahead and get rid of the potion that's inside of the PC from the start of the game. At this point, the only other item you can obtain in Moss Deep is the Super Rod. There is no way to lock yourself out of accessing this, so this is why any trap that involves Moss Deep City has to take fishing rods into account during setup. Now with all of the items taken care of, for the next step we need to get rid of another way to obtain money. Number three, defeat all of the gym trainers. In Moss Deep, the only place that you can battle other trainers is at the gym. This is another thing we can take advantage of when setting up a softlock, as trainers that are inside of gyms cannot be rematched once beaten. So by defeating everyone here, you'll be unable to earn any prize money later on. However, as a part of this setup, for now, you can leave the gym leaders Tate and Liza alone. We'll come back to them in a bit. Number four, have a Pokemon with Teleport. This next part is going to be similar to what was done in the Electrode video. In order to get around some of Gen 3's measures to prevent soft locking, we'll need a Pokemon that knows Teleport. The easiest way to do this is to go and catch an Abra in the cave at Duford. Number five, enter the Moss Deep Pokemon Center. There isn't much to this one, you just need to enter and exit the building. Doing so will mark Moss Deep's Pokemon Center as the last one you visited. It's important to remember that from this point on, you should avoid entering any other ones in the game. Number six, put all HM users in the daycare. Like I've talked about in previous videos, Gen 3 tries to make sure you can always access HM Pokemon. If you try to release your last Pokemon that knows a certain HM move, the Pokemon will instantly return with a message stating that it was worried about you. However, there is a very simple workaround to this. We may not be able to release these important Pokemon, but they can be placed entirely out of reach by putting them inside of the daycare. Just make sure that all of the important HM moves are shared between two Pokemon. After you've done so, all you need to do now is have one of your Pokemon use Teleport, which will take you all the way back to the last Pokemon Center you used, which in this case was at Moss Deep City. And now for the last step. 
Number 7. Release all of your other Pokémon. Once you're at the island, you'll now have to delete your remaining Pokémon, leaving you with just Mewtwo. The game allows you to release all but one Pokémon, but in order to trade with another game, you need to have at least two. This gets rid of yet another means of escape. And because this is Sapphire version, that means it has access to the special Jirachi from the Pokémon Coliseum bonus disc. This Jirachi can only be sent over once per save file, so once it is transferred, releasing it will cut off yet another lifeline the player could use. And with that, once you save your game, you will have doomed your file for all of eternity. With all of the previous steps completed, it is now seemingly impossible for the player to do anything else. Because Mewtwo can't learn Surf or Fly, there is no way for it to take you off the island. And because it's your only Pokémon, there's no way for you to trade with another game to obtain a different Pokémon that can. Because you have no money and nothing to sell, that means there is no way to buy Pokéballs. So even though you have access to the Super Rod, there is nothing you can do with any of the Pokémon that can be encountered with it. But here is where things get really insulting to the player. All of the trainers in the gym are permanently defeated and cannot be rebattled. However, Tate and Liza are still there waiting for you to challenge them. But, because their whole gimmick is that they are the double battle gym leaders, they will actually refuse to battle you because you only have one Pokémon. And with that, this Pokémon journey has come to one of the most humiliating ends imaginable. You can't leave the island, are stuck with one of the most powerful Pokémon in existence, and the only thing standing between you and the pocket change that could buy a Pokéball is the fact that the gym leaders are hiding behind a technicality. In fact, I'm willing to bet that these kids are so terrified of your Mewtwo that they're just using it as an excuse to not battle you. By the way, at this point in the game's story, Team Aqua has already gone off to awaken Kyogre. So don't worry, you won't have to wait around the island for that much longer. It's only a matter of time before the downpour starts, and you and the rest of Moss Deep City drown. When you really start to think about it, this might be the darkest softlock I've ever done in Pokémon before. Also, if you're curious about trying to do this in the Gen 6 remakes, don't bother. By that point, Game Freak was well aware of all these loopholes the player could exploit, so they added the Eon Flute, which pretty much just lets you use Fly at any time by calling Latios or Latios. They really wanted to make sure the remakes were completely idiot-proof. But anyways, looking at this trap as it is now, there doesn't seem to be any means of escape. Everything seems to have been taken into account, and I'm sure most of you watching right now would call it a lost cause. Despite that, though, I still decided to try. I tried to think about what I would do if someone had sent this scenario in to me. Surely there had to have been something that was overlooked. And well, this might surprise you, but after pondering it for a while, I realized that there was in fact one tiny detail I could make use of, but only if I prepared in advance. As stated before, Mewtwo can't fly or surf, so that information by itself wouldn't make you think you'd need to restrict anything else related to moves. In fact, all of its level up and TM moves can't offer anything useful in this situation either. But there is a method to give it the one single move it needs to help you escape. In Fire Red, Leaf Green, and Emerald versions, there are NPCs that will teach special moves to your Pokémon once per save file. And among these move tutors, one of them can teach a Pokémon Metronome. So let's say that before the Mewtwo was sent to Sapphire, it was taken to the move tutor in Fire Red and taught Metronome. This still follows all of the rules and restrictions we laid out earlier, but what does this really change? Well, the move Metronome allows the user to randomly use any move. And out of the hundreds of moves that exist in the game, there is one that will provide an escape. Payday is the only move in the entire series that allows the player to gain money from wild encounters. In Gen 3, the amount of money you get is equal to 5 times the user's level for each time the attack lands. Right now, the only battling that can possibly be done is against wild Pokémon with the Super Rod. So if you want to get out, you'll have no choice but to throw yourself into battle after battle until Metronome gives you Payday. Then you can use that money to buy a Pokéball to catch something. But what exactly are the odds of this occurring? Well, in Gen 3, there are a total of 354 Pokémon moves. Because Metronome itself is excluded from the random move pool, this means that Mewtwo has a 1 in 353 chance of happening to use Payday. In percentage, this is 0.28%. At Mewtwo's level, you'll earn 500 Pokédollars when this happens. In order to afford a single Pokéball at the Moss Deep Pokémart, this will need to happen at least twice. This is certainly a lot more forgiving than the requirements in the Lorelei softlock, as the paydays don't have to happen one after another, or even during the same battle. So this is where our dark story takes a turn for our two heroes. 
Now broken, homeless, and unable to earn the seventh badge, Mewtwo and Trainer get a job down by the shores, spending all day fishing. After a lot of time and effort, the two eventually reach their second payday, which they then use to buy a shiny new Pokeball. From there, all you need to do now is save and reset until the ball catches something. And since the only available Pokemon are water type, they will have no issues with being taught surf. From there, the pair has everything they need in order to leave the island. Of course, they also make sure to brutally destroy Tate and Liza's Pokemon, but the point is, they are now completely free to both resume their Pokemon adventure and go save the world. Now obviously, you can make this a true softlock by simply ensuring that the Mewtwo doesn't have Metronome when sent over, but the point I'm trying to make here is that if you really want to ruin a save file, you have to be extremely thorough. Even the most ridiculous ideas can end up undoing the trap completely. But that about does it for trapping yourself in Moss Deep City. I'm sure that there isn't anyone out there that would ever do this to themselves by accident, but it's always interesting to see how a game's mechanics can be exploited to do something that was never intended, especially when we're not doing anything along the lines of clipping through walls or flat out corrupting game data. That's it for now, my name is Picaspery and thanks for watching.